All right, this video is going to be mostly about the bed of the Tri Zero because that's the biggest change that I'm making in this rebuild of the printer. Uh, the big change is going from a stock 4NV0 to the Tri Zero is how the bed is mounted. On the stock V0, the bed is mounted only on one side. It's what's called a cantilever bed. Uh, so it's mounted on one side, and the idea, uh, the hope is that the bed is rigid enough that it doesn't flex down. Um, even though it's only mounted on one side. The tri zero, on the other hand, is a three-point tilting bed. You can get three points to define a plane, and then the bed can be trammed automatically instead of me having to manually try and tram the bed as best possible. This means that I don't have to mess with any springs or tiny screws. There's no paper test that I need to run. It will just work. One thing I want to be clear about is that uh, bed mesh and bed tilt are not necessarily the same thing. Uh, it depends a little bit on how you're referring to it, but in my in the way that I'm using it, bed tilt and bed tramming are roughly the same thing. That's the physical bed's alignment to the gantry. Um, and then when I say a bed mesh, it's when the the probe probes different points on the bed to get a uh, a sense of the flatness of the bed itself because basically if the bed's warped that will show up in a bed mesh but not in a tilt adjust um it's it's more like that tilt adjust is more relatively flat bed mesh is like specific points where are they um then again, this bed is only 120 millimeters, so with tramming, I'm not sure if bed mesh will be entirely necessary. I guess I'll do some tests and see how flat my my bed is and go based on that. Pretty much all Tri-Zero builds that I've seen use some sort of bed probe for tilt adjust and bed mesh. Um, there's a few different designs out there. Most of them are designed for the Voron V0 and also work for the Tri-0. I am not going to be going with any of those. Uh, not because they don't work, not because they're not good, but I personally don't like the type of probe that you pick up and drop off. Uh, I just find it a little bit annoying and clumsy. Uh, and I have been using the Mellowfly Alps pressure sensor. Um, and I've been, I've liked it so far. I mean, it has its pluses and minuses. I think that with the Tri-Zero bed, it will actually perform very well because the bed is solidly mounted. The bed is mounted with brass bushings to the aluminum extrusions. And because of that, it's very rigid. So I think that when the, uh, the pressure sensor taps the bed, it will very easily be able to pick up when it's in contact and when it's not. When it had the springs, sometimes I feel like the springs would give way a little bit before the pressure sensor would activate. But then if I made the pressure sensor more sensitive, it would have too much noise. I had been debating for a little while about if I wanted to change my heated bed or not, uh, mostly because I wanted it to heat up faster. Uh, the main goal is that I wanted to add some bed fans to help the chamber increase temperature faster. But since my Formbach kit came with a 60 watt bed, I wanted something with a little bit more wattage so that the fans wouldn't slow down the uh, bed heating up time too much. My two main options were switching to a 100 watt uh, bed heater also sticking with DC or going with a 150 watt alternating current bed which usually is faster at heating up but then also requires me to put in a solid state relay and complicates my wiring somewhat. For the DC bed on the other hand I would need to change my power supplies out because I was already reaching the limit of what I could do um, because my the way I had my power supply set up it was two power supplies and one was for the hot end and one was for the bed uh, and 
I I worried if uh, the, the power supply for the bed would be able to handle a higher wattage bed on top of also switching to the tri zero motors, which is more motors. But uh, lucky for me, I talked to West 3D and they sent me over the brand new LDO 300 watt power supply which is a perfect fit for my build. It's more compact than the two power supplies I had before. It gives me 275 watts of 24 volt power and it gives me 25 watts of 5 volt power which is perfect. Like that I don't need a buck converter for the Raspberry Pi. It simplifies everything quite a bit. Um, and I've just finished wiring it up and I'm really happy with how the power supply fits. So after getting that power supply, I decided to go with the 100 watt DC bed. I saw that LDO has one, which I think uses a PEI heater. Um, and I've seen some pretty good information about how its uh, temperature accuracy is uh, in comparison to the type of heater that I have right now where the thermistor is basically glued onto the bottom of the build plate. The LDO one, the thermistor screws into the middle of the build plate, which I think gives it a slightly more accurate bed temperature. And the higher wad that should make it heat up faster. So I am excited about that. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see how it works. I don't expect it to be a revolutionary change, but I am hoping for some slight improvements in the time it takes to heat up and I will do some testing later once the printer is on but for now I'm very happy with how it all went together. I'm hoping that overall these changes combine to improve first layer reliability and help improve print quality. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.